We've been in the middle of trying to slay the demon virus for nearly two years now. But, you know, if you watch my last video about coronavirus, um, there's one little item that is kind of bugging me that I'd like to get y'all's opinion on. I want to make this perfectly clear. We're healthcare workers. I chose to be a healthcare worker. I chose to be a healthcare worker in the military. None of this was thrust upon me. None of this was beyond my control. This was all my choice. I just want to get that out there. Lickety split. So my question is, with regards to COVID and this whole situation, the lockdowns, you know, the quarantining, you know, all these things that we've been doing for nearly two years now, um, I do have one question that's been kind of lingering around is, you know, what exactly is or should there be any compensation for the healthcare workers out there that are basically putting their asses on the line every day? You know, I mean, we're getting all this, you know, some people want to get vaccinated. Some people don't. Some people want to wear a mask. Some people don't. You know, either way, it's going to be us, the healthcare workers, whether you work in a hospital or a clinic, it's going to be us that's going to have to deal with it. It's going to be us that's going to have to deal with your decision, you know, to engage in risky behavior that gets you sick and ends up getting other people sick. And some of those people, I'm sure a lot of nurses and doctors and technicians, I'm sure a all of those people have gotten sick at some point because of this. So I'm wondering, should we be compensated for that? I mean, here's, 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 why, here's why I came to this conclusion or why I'm asking this question, really. Because, and it's not just out of self-interest. I am a healthcare worker. You know, I, I enjoy what I do. I love being an x-ray tech. But where I work, we were basically set up for failure, and when I say set up for failure, I mean exactly that. We were set up for failure. In fact, not just us. Everyone in that hospital was set up for failure. You know, I love I love where I work. I love my coworkers. But you know something? This is what I mean by set up for failure. Um, so when COVID first broke out, the quarantines, and it was like, you know, we got it. You know, we get information pretty regularly, you know, probably not any faster than you guys do, but as far as hospital protocols go, I mean, that shit was changing every single day. You know, every day there was a new, um, there was a new, uh, a new order out or a new set of rules or regulations or, you know, now we're wearing this and next week we're going to be wearing something else. We were wearing the big helmets for a while and everywhere we go, we had to have a mask on, you know, it was still pretty new, but you know, Obviously, you want to keep your healthcare team as healthy as possible, or they can't help others. You know, if we go down, then we then we can't help others, and now we're shorthanded. So, uh, at my hospital, you know, we have the as an X-ray tech, we have the regular diagnostic area. You walk in, we shoot your X-ray, you leave. You know, we're all using hand hygiene and protocols and all that stuff, trying to keep everything as clean and everyone as safe as possible. But the issue is, and I've mentioned this before, is that as we've discussed, civilians can do anything they want. They can choose to work. They can choose to not work. We're military. We can't choose to not work. We can't just say, hey, I've got a family. I can't risk it. You know, I can't do this. But the civilians can. And it would be one thing if they said, hey, listen, I'm not going to work here under these conditions. I don't like this. I'm going to leave. You know, I'm going to quit. It would be one thing to do that. You know, that at least would be you know, that at least would be, in my opinion, the braver thing to do would be say, hey, listen, I'm not going to I'm not going to put up with this. so I'm going to leave. You know, I think a lot of people, if they threaten to quit more often, would probably get what they want. But instead, what most civilians will do is they'll bitch and moan and complain until they get what they want. And at my job, civilians always get what they want. So what ends up happening is that, you know, we work on the second floor. The ER is on the first floor. So the ER takes precautions. We actually erected a huge tent in the, uh, in the parking lot. You know, we, we sectioned off this parking lot. They put up a huge tent where they were doing triage, you know, people who may be COVID positive may have had exposure, you know, they were doing their best to keep everybody segregated. So, and then inside the hospital, there was another area where, um, people were most likely to have COVID. We called it COVID Bay air quotes. And, 
We tried, like I said, we tried to keep everything as segregated as possible. So we had our own portable x-ray machine inside COVID Bay. So we could just go down there. We put on our PPE. We shoot. We leave. So uh, the issue comes along because now civilians are mandated that they cannot shoot COVID patients. Because at one point when this whole thing started, one of the entire wards was dedicated to just COVID you know, we had a lot of them, you know, there, the, the entire, there was one entire ward for COVID patients. There were several ICU, uh, rooms that were only for COVID, you know, the, you know, we're, we're trying to keep everything segregated so other people don't get sick and we get cross contaminated, you know, we're trying to avoid that. So it comes out that only the military are going to shoot COVID patients. You know, and then and, and we're talking about this was early on when the lockdowns first started. We have very limited amounts of PPE. We have very limited amounts of cleaning products. You know, everything is just kind of evaporating. And we're like, well, I mean, you know, it's like we got kicked in the nuts and we didn't see it coming. So everything, you know, we're running out of gloves. We're running out of masks. We're running out of these little disposable gaskets that we're putting on these helmets. So we had, I don't think I have a picture of it. I'll try to find one for you. But these masks, I forget what they were called. Um uh, these basically, it's a positive pressure helmet. It kind of looks like a cross between Iron Man and Darth Vader. But uh, you wear a battery on it, and it basically blows air through your helmet, so you can breathe and you can stay cool. And meanwhile, it keeps you, it keeps all, it keeps your nose and mouth and eyes uh, protected from the outside. So if you have that airborne or droplet precaution, that'll basically cover all of them. But they have these little disposable gaskets that. You know, you're supposed to change every week or every two weeks. You know, we're like wiping them down with cabbie wipes, you know, trying to clean them off because, you know, some of us are going down there and, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a day into basically into the belly of the beast, into COVID Bay to shoot these patients. You know, I mean, I'm not complaining. That's what we that's what we signed up for. But, you know, as I said in my last video, not everybody wants to work. Not everybody wants to get off their asses and do their fucking job. So, you know, a select few that are really dedicated, that are that will get up and go take care of business, we're the ones that suffer. We're the ones that ended up getting sick. Case in point, what happened to me? I got sick because I was one of the few guys who would say, look, I'll, I'll, I'll go take care of it. Did I, was it frustrating when there's a person down there who could do it themselves? Yeah, it was frustrating. What was even more frustrating is that these civilians, they work in several different hospitals, and they, they can't say that they're not going to see COVID patients in the other hospitals that they work in, but because they work in a military facility, they can say no. So... A little bit hypocritical in my opinion, but that's what happens. So the people who, you know, are hard chargers like me, and of course the military loves a hard charger, you know, um, I go down there time after time after time after time after time shooting all these COVID patients. And meanwhile, you know, it's amazing because they're telling us to reuse all this stuff that's obviously supposed to be disposable. Those N95 masks, you know, we're, they're telling us, look, Keep it, put it in a little paper bag. That's what they're having us do, is put our N95 mask into a little paper bag and basically let it air out, you know, because <laughs> I'm sure that's, you know, yeah. I mean, that doesn't sound very good. And I'm looking around and I'm like, you know, I just basically put it together in my head. You know, I'm definitely going to get COVID at some point because the chain of command that we had at the time, along with the personnel that we had at the time, you know, we had a chain of command that wasn't very, you know, that they didn't have our best interests in mind. And then the, my coworkers, my buddies, air quotes, you know, they basically will stall you out until someone else goes and goes and does it. You know, they will do anything to get out of doing work. So I basically looked around and said, you know what? I might as well just face the facts. Cause I can't say, I can't say no. I, I'm in the military. I can't say no. Just like if I was a Marine and they were going to send me to Iraq or Afghanistan, I can't say no, I'm not going to go. That's my job. That's what I signed up for. So I'm not complaining that I had to do it. I knew at some point I was going to get COVID and I was fine with that. I know, you know, I very rarely get sick. You know, I'm, a, I'm the type of person, if I get sick, I get sick, like really, really sick. You know, check out my video about uh, my experience with COVID for that. But 
I don't get sick too often. I get sick maybe two, once every two or three years, you know, I might get a flu or I might get a bug, you know. I mean, I know I, you know, I go to the gym a lot and I sweat and I'm rolling around on the floor, you know. I mean, I do all kinds of crazy stuff, you know. I take vitamin C like crazy. I try to take showers and be clean, but, you know, I just knew with the way things are being run at this hospital, it's very, very likely that I'm going to get COVID. So I just accepted it, you know. But what I didn't want to have happen was my family to have to suffer the consequences, you know. If you're a military person, they're already suffering the consequences with you not being there, you putting yourself in dangerous situations. They're the ones that are really going to suffer. So while that's going on, you know, I'm taking the back way around the house and coming in through the back door and taking showers and, you know, making sure I take everything off. I was taking off my shoes and my scrubs in the garage and then coming around back and jumping straight into the shower and scrubbing off and making sure, you know, before I hug and kiss my kids and my wife, you know, that I'm, I'm clean, you know, we're doing everything possible to keep everything clean and keep everything. But I still got it. I still got it. And part of the reason is is because the communication process has started breaking down. But that's a whole other video right there. You know, the how how communication just went went to shit. Oh, that's that's a whole other thing on that one. I'm probably gonna have to wait till I'm officially out of the military to tell you all about that. But anyway, um, I knew it was gonna happen sooner or later, and then eventually it did. And you know, we dealt with the consequences for that. But now we're getting vaccinated. Take your damn shot if you haven't already. Getting vaccinated, things are starting to get better. Things are trending in the right direction. So, you know. It is what it is, you know. We 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 signed up for this job. I I don't I certainly don't regret it. I don't wish I hadn't. I signed up for this job because I love my country, I love the Navy, and I love doing what I do. I signed up specifically to help people. But shouldn't we be compensated in some way for willingly putting ourselves in danger? And I'm talking about obvious danger. I mean, you step into danger every day, you know, whether you're whether you're just crossing the street or you're, you know, anything really, you know, I mean, you take risks every single day, but you know, the risk to benefit ratio for this was obviously one-sided. It's, I mean, nearly everyone that I work with has tested positive. Everyone. Because, because of the way things are, because we're expected to do everything. Civilians aren't allowed to put themselves, aren't allowed to put themselves in that situation. But you know, I mean, and I'm not just talking about x-ray techs. I'm not just talking about people that work in my hospital. I'm talking about all the healthcare workers around the world. There's got to be hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that work in hospitals and clinics around the country and around the world that all put themselves in danger because of this, you know, I don't know. And, you know, I don't know what a fitting, uh, compensation for them would be. I mean, you know, uh, you know, a raise would be nice. You know, I mean, they give people going overseas on deployments. They give them combat pay and hazardous duty pay. You know, the only thing that I've seen that we are getting is some humanitarian award, which is not worth anything on your advancement exam. It's nothing but a piece of chess candy to say that, you know what, we were here while this was going on. I mean, I'm not trying to sound ungrateful. It's nice. We appreciate that. And I'm glad that someone out there is at least trying to get something for us. But I mean, wouldn't it be nicer if someone was out there? I mean, obviously you can't give all of these people some huge award, you know, but it would be nice if, you know, there was some sort of recognition for the people who go out there and put their asses on the line and put their families on the line every day because, you know, basically so people can go out there and say, I'm not wearing a mask or I'm not going to take the vaccination. You know, we have to deal with that, with that mindset. We have, you know, whether you decide to do it or not, it is your choice. This is America, and those are part of the rights that we fight for every day. But really, take a look around. The people that you see in working in these hospitals and clinics and who are out there with masks on and hazmat suits, who are doing PCRs, doing the swabs and giving vaccinations and making sure you're safe at night, these are people just like you and me. They're healthcare workers. They got families. They got friends. They got people who care about them and they don't want to get them sick. Use your brain, people. Use your brain. The numbers are going down since the vaccinations. The number of deaths are going down since the vaccination started coming. 
It doesn't take a genius to see this, you know. I'm not going to get political about it. I know there's arguments on both sides, and I'm not going to try to argue you politically. But, you know, if the military is making us take it, you know, maybe there's something to it, you know. Healthcare workers or people just like you and me, I think that they should be, you know, given some sort of compensation for their bravery. And if you are out there watching right now, you're a nurse, you're a doctor, you're a PA. Well, maybe not a doctor. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, doctors too. Doctors, PAs, nurses, technicians, everybody. It's a huge, huge team that works in a hospital. When you see a doctor, take that doctor and put like 20 people behind that guy. That's what the team looks like that is just for you, just to get you better. So do us a favor, you know, use your brain when you put yourself in these situations, wear a mask, you know, just think about your neighbor. All right. As far as what a fitting piece of compensation for a healthcare worker would be in these times, I mean, I think a raise would not be unwarranted. For the military folk, I think a, you know, I think, you know, and I don't even have a really good example. I mean, something, though, something that shows that the military really does appreciate what we do because we do a lot, and especially on the enlisted side, you know, nothing against the officers. I got friends and, you know, good buddies who are officers, but the enlisted are specifically put out there like pawns to get basically, you know, to take the hits, you know. There was no doubt that we were going to get infected, and we did, and we kept coming to work. We took our little quarantine time off, we got better, and we went right back to work. But if one civilian gets hurt that works in this hospital, one civilian healthcare worker in my hospital gets hurt, everything shuts down. Not for us. I think that deserves some kind of compensation. Do you? Let me know in the comments below. Really hope you guys enjoyed the podcast today. Like, share, and subscribe to BJBL Unleashed on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram while you're at it. And before I go, I just want to say a big congratulations to Derek and Maria. They just had a beautiful little baby girl. Congratulations to you guys. Can't wait to see the pictures. You guys take it easy, and I'll see you guys real soon for more Unleashed. Unleashed.